This is Denise Allen with your Pennsylvania Ancestors and in this episode I am covering what you can find at a local courthouse and by local I mean county. So what can you find at a county courthouse and is it worth the time to visit? Part of my research trip to research this Curry family involved stopping at the courthouse. Now in the counties I'm searching in, uh, Clearfield County has all their records at the Clearfield County Courthouse. Center County has changed it up a little bit and they have most of their historical records, meaning records before 1900, 1930, at the Center County Library and Historical Museum. I think I have that right. I'll have it linked in the show notes so you can find it. And also Center County has digitized a lot of documents and I'll link that in the show notes too with some details of how to access those if you were lucky to have ancestors in Center County. So the Clearfield County Courthouse trip was one where I got to really dive into this Curry family and at a courthouse and the kinds of things I was looking for with this Curry family. So one of the things at a courthouse, one of the things they do is process divorces, right? The judge would issue divorce decrees for married couples who no longer wanted to be married, right? Just like today, there's a plaintiff and a defendant. So there's a person who initiates the divorce action and then the um, spouse needs to respond to it. And those things are documented, right? And they're documented now, they were documented then. And it used to be done by the state at the state level and the state at one point then said counties you can do it um, here you go and the date was when that started <laughs> this is one of those moments where you need to watch the video in order to get the date but I'll also drop it in the show notes if you're listening to the audio podcast <laughs> so anyway one of my questions about the Curry's was did Robinson and Nancy Curry divorce that was one of my questions and I had some questions around it, mostly because when Nancy died, Robinson wasn't mentioned at all. And I couldn't seem to find any sort of documentation saying that the two of them were really together towards the end. So I thought, well, let me just eliminate it as a possibility. Those are at the Prothonotary's office. And in Robinson and Nancy's case, I did not find them. Now, I did find other Currys who divorced and I did take note of their names in case that is something that I need later for research to do some additional research. The other thing I was wondering about Robinson, Curry in particular, I had some questions around why was he not drafted for the Civil War? I knew he didn't serve in the Civil War. He wasn't on any uh, unit roster list. The other Curries that served from Clearfield were James, Samuel, William, and you know, during the Civil War, they wanted as many able-bodied men to fight. So I thought, well, maybe he wasn't able-bodied. Maybe there was something physically or mentally wrong with him that he didn't serve. So one of the indexes you can find at a local county uh, courthouse is something called, wait for it, the Index to Lunatics and Drunkards. Now, we really don't call people lunatics or drunkards anymore. That's very politically incorrect, but it is historically correct <laughs> to call them lunatics and drunkards because that was the term used at the time. So that might be offensive to some listeners but that is the name you will actually need to use in order to find it at the courthouse i did check that and once again i found some other curries in but i did not find my man so the reason that he did not serve in the civil war i still don't know yet more details to come on that one My big find at the Clearfield County Courthouse was obtaining the entire probate packet for Nancy Curry. The first thing I got was this 
um, I guess you could call it like an affidavit, uh, a sworn statement from W.I. Curry. So this is the direct line that I've been tracing, who is giving a statement as to the place and time of his mother's death, Nancy Curry. So this was required by state law beginning in 1874, that when someone filed an estate or a will, they needed to give proof of death. And of course, we didn't have death certificates. We didn't have registrations at the county courthouse. So people often had to give these sworn statements. So this is something that, you, you know, as a genealogist, you definitely want. And here, Nancy Curry dies. They said that she's from New Millport and that she died at the home of David Hiles. So this isn't her house, <laughs> clearly. So now I have David Hiles to trace and I do have the actual date of death. So there's a blank in here to provide the day of the week, which wasn't provided, but I have the 21st day of June, 1889 at 7 a.m. So you doesn't get more exact than that, right? Until you get to the 20th century. So this is fantastic. And I love having this piece of information about David Hiles because it's none of her children's spouses, this David Hiles. It's none of her sister's spouses. And it's leaving me wonder, is this one of Robinson's sister's spouses, this David Hiles? Is that a connection? Or is this just a close friend of the family? I'm really not sure. So I have a whole David Hiles mystery to research, which I'm very excited about. The next thing I find is this statement signed by all the children of Nancy Curry, except for one. So Nancy Curry had six children and they're named in the estate filings. So the one missing here is Enos Curry. I have W.I. Curry, who signed this document. I have Effie Hetzel, H.Z. Hessel, who is her husband, Viola Ballman, W.S. Curry, and Elizabeth C. Fink. These are all children of hers. Uh, the, the women obviously married, but no Enos. So now I need to check, did he move? I'm really not clear why he's not on here. This was signed on the fourth day of December, 1889. Unfortunately, there were some witnesses and those are smudged. The last bit of information I found in the packet, and this packet's 20 pages long, so I'm just showing some highlights, but the, the last bit involves some expenses filed. There's two sets of medical expenses. There's some things around the administration of the estate in terms of the letters filed an ad put in the paper, and then the filing fees of $100 to get the estate through the courts. But the one item here is the coffin to Samuel Tobias. This was for $33, but missing from this list is the gravestone. So this is why I have no headstone to look for for Nancy Curry. Now, her husband, Robinson, according to a statement in the newspaper, died in 1883. So he died about six years before she did. And maybe the family was thinking they'd put up a headstone when she passed because he doesn't seem to have a headstone either. And I don't have any courthouse documents saying that he died. So nothing was passed through the courts in terms of a state filing. He didn't have a will. And so it's just a lot of uh, gray area, a lot of just fog with this family. But I'm thrilled to have this document. I'm thrilled to have some more names to research, to figure out their association with the Currys and, and Nancy's family, the Blooms, and maybe to figure out where this family came from before they came to Clearfield. And I hope to be able to figure it out with some more uh, documentation, but I wanted to share this. I'll put up the full probate packet in my members section, along with the transcription, because sometimes it's just easier, quite frankly, to read the, the typed words rather than all this handwriting. So very exciting stuff. If you're new to listening to your Pennsylvania ancestors, be sure to go back to the beginning of season five. 
and pick up the story of how I'm tracing John Curry from his 1923 death certificate and his family back to where they came from in Ireland. Now, in the next episode of Your Pennsylvania Ancestors, I'm going to cover the historical society part. So, what can you find outside of the courthouse? I'm going to be talking about the historical societies that I visited and what I found there that helped my research with this family and why you might want to contact them or make that trip too and what to expect. So this is Denise Allen with Your Pennsylvania Ancestors and you can always check out my free resources on paancestors.com. I've got lots of blog posts up there with tips and ideas of where to research and what to research in Pennsylvania so you can find your Pennsylvania ancestors. <music>